revolver. So, Your Honor, I'm going to object. All right, first of all, everybody's nervous because you have not demonstrated to us that they are unloaded. So before you start showing us the weapons, make sure they're unloaded, including that one that you just touched. Uh, Mr. Kuski, do you agree with me that basic gun safety requires that the handler of the gun not point the gun at anyone? If it's a real gun, yes. Do you agree with me? that while you were sitting here in the courtroom, uh, you pulled out a gun and you pointed it at the judge? I do not. You disagree? I pointed the gun into this space up here, never directly at the judge. Do you agree that basic gun safety requires that you uh, keep the muzzle of the gun pointed down for safety? Not at all. A gun may be pointed as any hunter education class like I taught may be pointed up, may be pointed back, may be pointed cross arms, as in the military, may be pointed at the ground, may be put in something uh, like a military stance, at, such as order arms with the butt on the ground and the piece right under your arm. So, no. And to further, in a cross draw or any no, of the... No, no, I'm not talking about a cross draw, thank you. Um, do you agree that when you uh, pulled that firearm out, and pointed it in the direction of the judge, the deputy standing next to you had to intervene and grab the gun yeah, and object. point it down. I don't object. Mr. Kuski, have, have you ever been uh, qualified as an expert in firearm safety in a court of law? No. Have you ever worked on uh, criminal cases before? Yes, I have. Have all of the cases that you've, the criminal cases that you've worked on, has Mr. Bowles been the uh, attorney in all of them? Not at all. Not at all? No. Let me clarify my question. Have you worked on criminal cases related to the securities 
industry? Yes, I have. Okay. Other than, and, and you're an investment banker, correct? Not exactly, but sufficient name for it. Okay. Um, and other than working on uh, criminal cases having to do with securities, do you agree with me that the, the only other types of criminal cases uh, you've worked on have all involved Mr. Bowles? I do not. Uh, isn't it true, sir, that uh, you, you provided a pretrial interview in this case on November 29th, 2023? Yes, I did. Yes. And isn't it true that during that interview, my investigator, Mr. Rice, asked you, is Mr. Bowles the only attorney that you've worked with? And your response was, outside of the securities industry in the past, yes. Yes, and I have worked since then, and I have worked prior to that confidentially with cases before the United States Navy and other cases which were criminal, and I believed you were speaking only of what's going on here. If you'd like to hear the other ones, I'm very happy to tell you. I worked, for example, with the Monterey Sheriffs. Is there a question? No, there isn't, there is not a question on the table right now. Um, you gave a, a lengthy uh, description about how a person could turn a dummy round into a live round. You recall the testimony that you gave moments ago. Yes. Um, I want to talk to you about doing the opposite, okay? I want to talk to you about taking a live round and turning it into a dummy round. Okay. Okay? Uh, do you agree with me, sir, that the first step uh, is you would place the live round in the inertia puller and smack it so that the projectile separates and the powder comes out. Yes. And at that point in time, you are left with an empty casing, a projectile, a pile of gunpowder. But the problem with your casing is that it still has a live primer, That's right? That's right. So in order to make the primer inert, you can take that empty shell casing with that live primer, you can put it into a firearm, and you can fire it. Correct. And now I've made the primer inert. There is another way, if you wish to hear. No, no, I, I, I appreciate you, though. But you, you, Thank you, you. Yes, I agree. You agree that what I'm saying it, it can be done. Can be done. And then, after I've fired it and I've heard the pop, knowing, knowing that the primer has now been made inert, I can take that projectile and I can just put super glue on it and stick it back into that casing. Well, you couldn't normally without expanding the case. That's what I was talking about when you do a sizer. You could expand the case with a sizer because what's going to happen in many cases, and I can't say every one because I've never done super glue, is it's very difficult to get a bullet into a case that hasn't been expanded and sized. You could try it. I can't guarantee it'll work. Sure, I mean, you can take the empty shell casing and you can put it on top of a projectile and you can take your inertia puller or a hammer mm -hmm. and just tap it an down. Inertia, uh, an inertia puller is made out of plastic. It is not for tapping anything down. But you could take a hammer, but what's very likely to happen is you'll bend the case beyond all use and recognition and it can't fall in. That's why you expand cases in the process. You could try it. I've never beat in any bullets. Some bullets are very, very hard, some are soft. So it is possible with a soft lead bullet that you could maybe not bend your case and maybe not shave off your bullet. Possible. And isn't it true, sir, that the live ammunition found on the set of rust in fact had soft lead bullets? I didn't measure the lead, so there's, there's something called a... Well, hang on. I appreciate your response. Um, in fact, sir, y you have never actually viewed the live rounds that are in evidence. You've only seen pictures of them, isn't correct. that correct? So you haven't taken them and looked at them, right? No, I've taken all the pictures and looked, that's it. Okay, uh, but, but you watched the testimony of our expert, Mr. Haig. Yes, I did. And isn't it true that Mr. Haig testified that the projectiles from the live rounds found on the set of rust were soft? Lead. I didn't hear soft, but lead, certainly. 
They weren't copper jacketed, correct? No, not copper jacketed. And he also testified that because they were lead, and lead is a soft metal, that's the reason that that projectile became so damaged when it went through Ms. Hutchins and into Mr. Souza. Absolutely, that's called ballooning. All right, thank you, sir. Um, you testified on direct examination that you can't tell a live round from a dummy round uh, in a photograph. Simply in a photograph. I agree with Mr. Haig, who said the same thing. Well, do you agree with me that you can tell a live round from a dummy round in a photograph if that dummy round has a hole drilled into the casing so it can't have any gunpowder? Absolutely. All right. Thank you, sir.